Welcome back to my Strapi course. In this video, we're going to talk about the Strapi administrator panel users and roles and how to give granular permissions to each one of the administrator users in Strapi. To start, I have this Strapi instance, which is almost brand new. The only things I have already prepared are a couple of types here in the content type builder. I've created a product type a single type called homepage and one component called metadata so that I have so that I have one type of each in order to demonstrate granular permissions per type to access the settings for users and roles go to the settings panel in Strapi and here you will notice we actually have two different roles and permissions settings for users under the administration panel category we have the roles and users but you also have the users and permissions plugin, which also has a roles section and a couple of other settings. If we look at the two different roles views under the administration panel, we have super admin, editor, and author roles by default. And we have one user as super admin. This is the user you're logged in right now. Um, when you bootstrap a Strapi instance, you create a super admin user on the first login and he's assigned this role. In the users and permissions plugin, however, if I open roles, we only have two roles by default, authenticated and public, and there are zero, zero users in both. This is because the administration panel roles and users, as you can probably figure by this label, are the users which access the Strapi admin panel, this panel right here, which has the content manager, content type builder, media library, and settings. And these are the roles for these users, the Strapi admin panel users. While the users and permissions plugin allows you to create users for your content types, meaning the content types you create here and the content created in the content manager that is accessed through the API, you can create users that access these contents. And the users of your actual front end application can be handled here. The users and permissions plugin allows you to set up things like JWT authentication, user sign up with email templates for reset password and email address confirmation, and other things. We'll cover the users and permission plugin in another video. In this video, I will focus on the administration panel roles and users. Starting with roles, I already mentioned that we have three roles by default, author, editor, and super admin. You can see them in this grid view and you can create custom roles. But first, let's talk about what a row is. A row is simply a collection of rules and permissions for each content type and section in the Strapi admin panel. If I open author, for example, to edit it, you will see that I, uh, each row has a name and description, which are not important. They are just for the convenience of view, the administrator who assigns these roles. And then we have tabs for different types, collections, single types, plugins, and settings. This part right here, the settings of the Strapi admin panel, separated to different sections. Each plugin we have installed in our Strapi instance, and then single types and collection types, of course. Each collection type, I can assign this row access for each collection type to create, read, update, delete, and publish items if we have the draft and publish workflow enabled. In addition to that, I can also expand each collection type and give permissions for each field. For example, I might want this author. Uh, let's take my product type, for example. It has a title, a school description, and price fields. Quite straightforward. Let's say that I want the author to be able to create each of these fields and read all of them but only update title, description, and price, without price maybe, of existing fields. I can do that. I have the granular control to give access to this uh, row for each field in my content type, which is very useful. In addition to that, we also have additional settings here, which if I click right now, it will tell me that I first need to select actions before defining conditions. These settings are for conditions. Let's say I'll collapse the fields view and let's say I want to give my author the right to read and create products. And then when I go to settings, I can apply conditions. These conditions are can create when and can read when. So I give additional conditions to the read and create permissions, which are 
is creator and has the same role as creator, where creator means the person who created this item. For example, if I said this, the row would be able to read an item which he created himself. Going forward, single types, so far we've been talking about collection types, single types have very similar permissions. If I expand home page, I have fields permissions and type permissions, and I have the same conditional settings for each. If I click, you will see they are exactly the same. Single types and collection types are very similar. Uh, the only difference being that single types, uh, you can have only one instance of a single type. Plugins are somewhat more interesting. Each plugin has different permission options depending on the type of the plugin. If we go through them, these are the built-in plugins, so you will have them for sure and they're important. Content manager. Here we have uh, different settings. Primarily, uh, we can give the user the permission to configure the view for single types, collection types, and the layout of components. Or we can uh, prevent the user from controlling the view. For content type builder, we can give users only the read permission. This is because only super admins can access the content type builder. We also have upload. This is the plugin managing the media library essentially. We can give access to the media library from here and access for assets being create, update, delete, and download. And we have the users and permissions plugin. This is not the users and permissions settings for the administration panel. This is the users and permissions plugin right here for the end users. And here we have the ability to create roles, providers, email templates, and advanced settings. Each granular as much as possible. Next up, we have the settings panel permissions. Here, the settings are split in multiple sections. Each one, of course, has different permissions, which you can get very similar to content types. I won't go through each one. They are very straightforward. If you look at the setting in the admin panel, you will figure out which permission to give. Now, let's talk about the, let's look at the default roles. We looked at author here. Author is pretty basic by default. I think I already modified it. Uh, editor also doesn't have a lot of permissions, but super admin by default has all permissions and the row super admin here is read only. That's because you always have to have a super admin row in Strapi. And it's here only for reference so that you can see, I guess that everything is allowed. It's not very useful, but it's good to see the row and so that it's not hidden in any way. And you can assign users to it. So that's, you can see the assigned users to it. Now you can create a custom row with the add new row button. You can call it whatever you want. For example, I can call it products editor and I can give this editor all, all possible access to products except delete, let's say. And yeah, I can also give them granular permissions. For example, if I don't want the SKU to be updated by some user. And then I can also configure his access to the plugins. I would want him to be able to configure the view of collection types and maybe read the content type builder or not. I will want my user to have access to the media library and create and update and download copy link assets. And when I create my product editor, I'll give them some description just for the demo, save. And I have my products editor user role, excuse me. If I want to give that role to a user, I actually have to go to the user section. Again, these are the Strapi admin panel users. And I have my user right here, which is a super admin. If I click edit on it though, I can actually, as you can see, change roles here users roles and I have the super admin role. It's important to note that the user can have several nodes. That's very important. I'll mention why later, but I can also give my user the products editor role and save. If I go back and go to roles, I now see that product editor has one user and super admin has one user. I want to spend a few minutes to talk about the practices I follow when I create real roles and users for back uh, CMS administration. So I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, just sharing my experience. I prefer to create roles for each content type I have. 
take products for example. I would create a couple of users for products. First of all, I would create a role which will be products admin. And the products admin will naturally have all access to the product section, the products content type. Let's save that role. I would also create a products read only role. This role will be for users who just need to view the product section or any arbitrary content type. The important thing here is that I'm creating a role for one specific content type only. And in some cases, I might need a role in between. Admin can do everything with products, while read only can only read. In some cases with some more specific content types, I might need a products editor role, which is something in between. Uh, a product editor might be able to create, read and update, but not delete an item. While he might be able to publish, you might limit the update functions. For example, you might not want the editor to be able to edit the SKU and price fields, or you might restrict the update altogether to only items that the editor has created so that he doesn't edit items of other backend users. This is just an example for, for a in-between editor row. You might also call it whatever you want. I just find it, um, you know, convenient and easy to understand using the editor keyword for that row in between an admin and a read only user. Now, when you have such granular permissions for each content type, sure, you will have a lot of roles, but you can then go to users and as Strapi supports multiple roles per user, you can give granular permissions to your users from here. Of course, you can give granular permissions with roles as well, but this way, your roles will be limited in growth to the number of content types and you won't create arbitrary roles and wonder how to name them all the time. This way you know the roles are per content type and you can give the users the roles they need for each content type and module. They would also likely be able to request access for content types rather than know the name of an arbitrary role. And uh, I find this to be a best practice for me and it seems to work really well that way. With this, I'll wrap today's video. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to get notified when the next video in the series is released. Take care.